Hey guys, welcome back to Gaming News on Clownfish Gaming. If you're producing content on YouTube using Pokemon characters, you might want to rethink that. Apparently, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are going on a copyright strike spree. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they think it's a good idea, but they're doing it and uh, they're getting some, some pretty negative headlines for it. We're going to talk about that and kind of the utter state of... Uh, Pokemon right now here on Clownfish Gaming. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so uh, to the YouTube channel. And also we repost the gaming news as part of the Clownfish TV audio edition podcast. So thank you very much for subscribing wherever you find, find this uh, content. So I got to give a hat tip to the Taskman Offensive on Twitter who tagged me in on this and said that the Pokemon company is not only copyright striking old YouTube videos and DMCAing mods as of recently, but also looking to hire an ESG manager. So there's all kinds of stuff going on with Pokemon right now. Uh, you said Pal World will force Pokemon to evolve, but seems to be doing the opposite. I'm going to talk about Pal World in this video, in this episode, because Pal World's actually doing very, very well. But let's go out to uh, the Sun first. The Sun, a, a bastion of journalistic integrity. But they have an article on this. Um, it is hitting the mainstream media. Pika ban. Two more strikes. My channel gets deleted. Fuming YouTuber cries as Pokemon bans years old video. We're talking a seven year old video. And I'm sure this is just like a bot that's going through and striking stuff. But there's all kinds of content. I mean, hell, we've got. Uh, Pokemon Minecraft mods, I think, on this channel, and I'm hoping they don't come after that. The uh, Pixelmon, Pixelmon server. Uh, the Pokemon company is known for going after anyone using Pokemon without permission. As a recent case shows, even if the content is almost a decade old, it can still get a copyright strike. Uh, Noah J456, who has over 5 million, so he's a bigger channel. He has over 5 million subscribers on YouTube, tweeted how the Pokemon company took down a video he posted seven years ago. Seven years ago. Warning to all content creators, if your videos feature any sort of modded Pokemon content, I would delete and unlist it ASAP. I just got a manual strike for a video I made seven years ago featuring Pokemon modded into Call of Duty Zombies. Two more strikes, my channel gets deleted. Now, five million subs, Noah is gonna have probably a handler at YouTube. And I'm sure they will take care of it because they don't want to lose bigger channels like this. That being said, it was a manual flagging. So that means somebody at the Pokemon company is going around or somebody associated with the Pokemon company is going around and flagging videos using off-brand Pokemon. And it could have something to do with Pal World. I I'm going to be honest. I think that they're ramping up their uh, efforts to enforce their IP. The popular Call of Duty content creator's video featured Pokemon modded into Call of Duty Zombies. I just got a manual strike. Two more strikes, it gets deleted. The copyright strike is a dangerous sign for content creators. It means anyone who uploads a YouTube video containing modified Pokemon in any capacity could be at risk of having their channel deleted. This is insane, Nintendo. This is this is absolutely bonkers. This is not how you, you uh, win friends and influence people. Right, Nintendo did this before too. If you were streaming their games, this is why indie games blew up. This is why games like Pal World are blowing up with streamers because Nintendo does this crap. I love Nintendo games. Don't get me wrong, I do. My Switch is probably like one of my all time favorite consoles. That being said, Nintendo does this all the time. They're the Disney of video game companies and I understand they wanna protect their IP, but they don't give fans any breathing room a lot of times. And we've seen this time and time and time again, just an overreaction, overcorrection. Uh, we've seen people get shut down hard and fined for minor, relatively minor infractions. Did somebody just have his house raided because he was hosting ROMs or something? I mean, that's that's overkill, right? I mean, I get it. You don't want people out there distributing your, your brand new games online, but like, damn. You know, um, and with the streaming, they they were basically forcing content creators to join Nintendo's MCN. And this wasn't that long ago. It was like maybe eight or 10 years ago that if you wanted to stream Nintendo games on YouTube or Twitch or whatever, you had to join their MCN and they got half the money. And the backlash was fierce and it cost them tremendously. It did. 
And now I think they're they're ramping this this up again with Pokemon. I, I think because of Power World, I'm going to talk about Power World a little bit later in the video. But uh, YouTube has a strict three strikes policy in place, meaning that channels that receive three strikes within 90 days are removed from the video platform permanently. This is not the first time the Pokemon company has done this. In January of 2024, content creator Toasted Shoes Pal World times Pokemon mod video earned the channel a copyright strike. I remember that. That was that was uh, when he went through and turned all the pals into Pokemon. And Nintendo lost their shit because they're already like, well, Pal World's too close for comfort to Pokemon. And then they went through and, and changed them to actual Pokemon. And yeah, got a strike. Pal World's similarity to Pokemon might have contributed to a cracking down on copyright by the Pokemon company. I believe 100% that's what's going on. I think it's because of Pal World. So if you're a content creator, you've made a video involving those lovable pocket monsters, you might want to set it to private. If you're looking for the latest game you can play on the Switch, check out Princess Peach Showtime. Why would anyone want to stream Nintendo games if in seven years they can come back and hit you with a copyright strike? You know what I'm saying? Like that 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 concerns me. Cause like as much as I love these games, it's not worth the risk to, to our channel to do this. So they're also looking for apparently uh, a DEI person. Uh, there have been concerns, obviously, in gaming lately because of Sweet Baby Inc. and all the stuff going on with that about any company that's that's broadcasting that they're looking for somebody to be in charge of DEI and social responsibility. And uh, yeah, this is uh, coming from uh, Colonel Otaku Gatekeeper. If you thought Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were awful, the next installment is going to be worse. The Pokemon company has released a job hiring for an ESG director, which will oversee all creative output for the next Pokemon game. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's going to go well. Considering Pal World, you can like capture and enslave pals and humans and butcher and eat them if you want to. Uh, I don't. I don't think the next Pokemon game is going to be a true competitor to to Pal World, right? Um, so anyway, let's go out and talk about Pal World since I'm already already here. Two months after launch. Pal World is still averaging over 100,000 concurrent players a day on Steam, even with the biggest content updates still to come. Yeah, I think I think stuff like this with Nintendo, with the Pokemon company cracking down irrationally. It was like, I mean, you're talking a seven-year-old video. It was just a mod for Call of Duty. And I've seen people do lots of Pokemon uh, adjacent content on YouTube, uh, you know, using Gary's mod or you know, in Minecraft or even the Sims, I think people have modded. And that's kind of a scary place. So this is actually just going to incentivize content creators to push the competition. And Power World's still popular. Everybody said it was going to be a fad. It was going to die off. It's not dying off. Two months after launch, Power World has proven it has staying power with over 100,000 concurrent players a day still playing on Steam. It became an overnight sensation Back in January, selling 2 million copies in a single day, it surpassed 2 million concurrent players on Steam, a feat which, until that point, only um, PUBG Battlegrounds had managed to pull off. Now, two months later, this Pokemon survival mashup is still attracting an impressive number of players. And uh, apparently, it's doing really well on Xbox, too. Pal World propels Xbox to best ever month of console playtime. Uh, Pal World, a game that's been that the internet had dubbed Pokemon with guns ahead of its early access release in January, has been a huge success for both the developer and the Xbox. Xbox celebrated a fast start to 2024, revealing that Janu January was actually its biggest month ever on console in terms of playtime. Wow. In a blog post detailing Xbox's efforts to support independent developers, Microsoft highlighted Pal World as a key reason for this record and stated Pal World has had more than 10 million players on consoles so far. That's crazy. So what's going to happen? I'm telling you, you're, you're seeing a tale of two gaming industries here. You're seeing the AAA industry double down on expense and nonsense, I think, in a lot of cases with, uh, you know, DEI and ESG and all that drama. And they're spending way too much money on these games. They're not getting, uh, you know, a return on that investment. And you've got developers of these companies, you know, screaming into thin air at the GDC and stuff, right? Go, go look up that 
the whole thing. But I think we're going to see more games like Power World. We're going to see more games like Helldivers 2. They're maybe not the most technically impressive games out there, but they're a lot of fun and they're not ham-fisted. They're profitable because it didn't cost a, a whole lot to make them compared to the AAA titles, and they're not hitting you upside the head with politics. They're just trying to give you a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's that's where I think everything is is gonna go, and gamers are going to naturally gravitate toward games that feel like games again. And I'm okay with the graphics not being the best thing ever. I'm totally fine with it. Actually, one game I play when I have an extra 15, 20 minutes, and I, I'm just looking for some time to kill. It's it's Vampire Survivors, which has 8 bit, 16 bit graphics and can run on a potato computer. And I love that game. I play it all the time. So, you know, you don't need the best graphics ever. You don't need you know, all the polish of uh, a AAA title. In fact, I saw that they announced that the uh, Joker was coming to Suicide Squad and nobody cared because that game is basically dead at this point. Suicide Squad, just put in perspective, Suicide Squad, which has become the poster child for Sweet Baby Inc., uh, was averaging last time I checked, it was averaging under 500 concurrent players and Power world is like a hundred thousand players. And one of these games cost a hell of a lot more than the other one did. I'm just saying, but to bring it back to Nintendo, I'm telling you, this is probably Power world is the trigger for this. They're going to crack down on any, uh, Pokemon adjacent content. I think it's overkill. I think it's going to destroy their reputation with gamers and Nintendo actually had a pretty good rep with gamers because of some of the stuff they were allowing on the switch and they weren't doing as much censorship and all that. But they're, if they go all in on this between this and the ESG and the DEI stuff, that's, that's going to be it for them. People are going to be like, yep, you know what? We had a good run, Nintendo. We had a good run. And, and now is the time when we part ways. Uh, I'm just, I'm just saying it can happen. going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.